Good morning, good morning, happy Sunday! It's a beautiful Sunday morning. For this morning, our sermon topic will be called to lead. Tell the person next to you, we are all called to lead, right? Not just called to lead, but called to change. Amen? Amen. Tell the person next to you, you are an iron man. Yeah, iron man yung katabi mo, or iron woman. Right? In Proverbs 27, 17, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So do you agree with me that we need each other, right? We need each other because we can sharpen each other. I asked myself before, you know, we have these uh, stages in spiritual growth. We started, you know, dead spiritually. Then we became, we, 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 we got born again. We became a baby Christian. Then became a, a, a spiritual child. Then became a spiritual teenager. Then became a spiritual young adult. And then we became a spiritual parent. We're not up to the time that we're, you know, we can make disciples of other Christians or other souls or people who are not yet believers. When I was, uh, when I got born again, I was a spiritual baby in a sense. I asked myself, why I don't want to be a church worker? Why I don't want to be a church leader? Or why I don't want to be a church pastor? Because, you see, uh, there is something in me that deep, deep, deep inside me that I want to uh, worship God, I want to please Him, but I am kind of hindered by fear. Not just fear, but fears. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, no fear. O sabi mo sa katabi mo, no fear. <laughs> Mabang no fear, ha? Fears! Yan yung problem natin, eh. Diba? We are, uh, I, I think, two Sundays ago, three Sundays ago, I explained that fear will uh, paralyze us. You see? Naalala pa niya. Fear will... Fa- we, f- 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 <laughs> Ito problema ko pag F tsaka P. <laughs> the fear will paralyze us. So, pagbabaligtad ko yan, fear will paralyze us. Fears. This morning, let's talk about facing four leadership fears. No? Why do we need to face this? Because you are in a crossroad. God is asking you to make a big decision. Do you know that there are over 500 recorded phobias? Naalala ko to exam namin to nung college kasi psychology yung course ko eh. 500 phobias. Wala akong natandaan. <laughs> Are you familiar with gamophobia? Mm-hmm. Yung takot makipag-commit. You are afraid to get married, no? to be in a commitment, a relationship na, na committed ka. How about, are you familiar with acrophobia? The fear of heights. Yan, kapag ka medyo mataas na, uh, para bang ako kayo na pinapawisan na yung kamay mo? Or pinapawisan na yung talampakan mo dahil you have fear of heights? How about, eto, problema ko to, ofido, o, ofidiophobia, or fear of snakes. Kahit na maliit na snake lang, tatakbo ko. Wala akong takot. Kahit saan, multo, anything, kahit na lasing sa kanto, hindi ako takot. Pero pag nakakita ako ng aha sa trail, abang nagma-mountain bike kami before, abang uh, nag-hiking, oh my goodness, tatakbo ako sigurado. I don't know. Makita ko lang, ma-imagine ko lang, ahas, natatakot ako. I have this phobia. Sa snakes. How about agoraphobia? No? 
the fear of situations with difficult escapes. No? Ibig sabihin, uh, agora means market. Di ba? Familiar kayo? Agora San Juan. Yun. Ibig sabihin nun, agora San Juan. Ibig sabihin kasi na agora market. Ibig sabihin na marketplace, maraming tao. So if you are in a situation that there, there's a lot of people, medyo uneasy ka. So you call that agoraphobia. How about pentera phobia? Fear of mother-in-law. <laughs> I don't have this. That's my real mother-in-law. Nanonood dyan ngayon. Hi, nanay. No, I don't have this because ang tawag sa akin ng biyanan ko, best friend eh. So, I don't have this. Pero madaming Pilipino, lalo na si Pepe Pimentel. Galit sa biyanan, ano? Buti pa daw si Adan, walang biyanan. <laughs> See, if you are a servant leader of an organization, especially a church, you might have experience of a twinge of everything. Big sabihin, medyo may konting pain of, you know, na parang uh, uneasy ka, you have this fear, you want to go out for God, pero something is hindering you. You see, some have lumped them together under liderophobia umbrella. Walang ganyan, gawa-gawa ko lang yan. Pero, that's the point. Kahit walang word na ganyan, there is liderophobia. Have you experienced when you were in school before, your teacher will ask no, somebody to lead the class or whatever, lahat naka, ano na, nakayuko na. Di ba? Because you have lider, lider, liderophobia. You see, it doesn't take much of a climb up the church ladder to experience the fear of heights. You see, leadership is uh, it's not just a position. Now, when we say leadership, it starts with from the workers no, to, the, to the teachers, to the leaders of this church, the board of trustees, to the pastoral staff, everybody who's working behind the scene. We are all leaders. Here's the thing, no? Each upward step can be less stable and make the climber more vulnerable to the actions or attitude of the church people. Siyempre, ayaw mo naman may masabi yung ibang tao. Kaya, huwag na lang ako mag -lead. Eh, baka kung ano na lang ang sabihin ng iba. You are being called by God to serve, eventually lead in a particular ministry, but you are being hindered by so many fears, and yet, no, masyado tayo minsan conscious, no, kasi ako, I myself experienced this, na gusto ko sanang mag-serve, I want to lead, but the thing is, baka may masabi yung iba. We're so conscious about what other people will say, what our church churchmates will say, but we're not conscious what our Lord Jesus Christ will say, right? You see, it's clear, no? In the Gospel of Luke, it says, Jesus said, Here I am, among you, as one who what? Who serves? In Filipino, in Tagalog, then dito ako, kasama ninyo, bilang isa sa inyo na naninilbihan. Right? So, he himself, no, pinakita niya yung servant leadership. Hindi siya dumating dito as, you know, in, in, in grandeur, in in a fiery chariot, in a, in, you know, hindi siya pinanganak sa five-star hotel. In all humility, and he calls himself a servant leader. That's what I call myself. I don't call myself the senior pastor. I call myself the lead servant leader. Why? Because that's my job description. 
my job description is not to take the prestige of being the senior pastor, but to take part of the service of God. Amen? Bakit? Kasi sino yung role model ko? Jesus Himself. The most humble being na kilala ko. From my interaction with other servant leaders, I observed that there are at least four main servant leadership fears. Or being a servant leader or being a worker in a church, being a teacher, being a pastor, being a board of trustees, being, you know, simple worker in a church. Kahit na uh, yung, I remember, speaking of humility, I used to uh, be part of a mega church in the Philippines. I had this D group, discipleship group, and uh, I think they're watching right now. And uh, in our group, these are a group of businessmen. You know, some of them are doctors, and uh, we were assigned in a parking lot. No, ano yung gagawin namin? We will uh, man the traffic kasi ang dami ng tao eh. And yet, nagbibiruan kami. O oh, yan po, pakisundan na lang po yan. Yan po, may-ari po yan ng kumpanya. Pakisundan na lang. And these people are so humble that no, they don't care kung anong estado nila sa buhay. You see, servant leadership is something na we need to understand no, in the context of not of this world, but in the context of Jesus Christ. Balikan natin kanina yung binasa. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, no, he wrote about something sa mga elders or those people who facilitate the church, who leads the church. Sabi ni Peter, I exhort the elders among you as fellow elder. Uh, Ini-encourage ko kayo, kayong mga nangunguna dito, bilang kapwa nyo naglilingkod sa Panginoon, sabi niya. No? No, witness to the sufferings of Christ because they are all eyewitnesses. Eh. Yun yung lamang nila sa atin. As well as one who shares in the glory about to be revealed. Shepherd God's flock among you, not overseeing out of compulsion, but willingly. No? Sa Tagalog, sabi niya, alagaan niyo ang mga tupa ng Panginoon, no? hindi dahil napipilitan kayo, kung hindi dahil gusto niyo. It's a form of worship to God. As God would have you, but not out of greed for money, but eagerly. Hindi dahil sa meron tayong interes na magkaroon tayo, kundi may eagerness sa puso natin because we want to please God. Here's the thing. If you want to get rich, don't join the ministry. I tell you. Or unless you want to be, you know, a prosperity preacher na naka-jet plane, naka-bentley. Naka Here's the thing. Not out of greed for money, but eagerly. Not lording it over those entrusted to you. Not lording. Ibig sabihin, hindi kayo, uh, you, you, you don't appear to them as parang kayo yung Panginoon nila, but you are servant to them. Now, even the Bible says that Jesus came here not to be served, but to serve. He's a servant. No, in-entrust sa atin ng Panginoon, hindi natin sila aapihin, hindi natin sila, uh, kumbaga, parang mas mataas tayo sa kanila. No, parang sa politics, whenever election you know, comes, eh, madami kang marinig na pangako from many politicians. Huwag niyo po akong kalimutan. For congressman, Madaling lapitan, mahirap hanapin. <laughs> Di ba? Sabi dito, and when the chief shepherd of peers, nahirapan, nahirapan na naman ako sa P at sa F. And when the chief, kasi pag magkasunod yung F at P, 
nag nag scramble sa utak ko. And when the chief shepherd appears, sino to? Jesus is our sheep, uh, chief shepherd. You will receive the unfading crown of glory. Yun yung good news. We have an unfading crown of glory. Merong, merong wage, merong bayad, merong, merong gantimpala. Right? Serving God is not just serving God. Serving God is, of course, we're not after sa ako ni bibigay ng Panginoon. We're after to glorify Him and to worship His name. But you see, may bonus. In the same way, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Kayong mga bago, kayong mga bata pa, or not necessarily young in age, but young in spiritual maturity, no? Be subject to your elders, those who are leading the church. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Magkaroon na tayo na mababang doob. Many times in my life, I was invited to be a guest preacher in many churches in the Philippines and here in the U.S. And there were times that it saddens me that I witnessed that there are some churches that they don't start they, they don't start the service because you know wala pa yung mga malalaking titers na tayo magsimula. It's not about that. Amen. Sabi dito, all of you clothe yourselves clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Walang ranking sa mata ng Panginoon. Kaya papasok dito mahirap, kaya papasok sa pintong yun mayaman, parehas lang ang tingin ng Diyos dyan. Tayo lang ang nagdi-differentiate. God resists the proud. See, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. In his conclusion, sabi ni Peter, Humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God so that He may exalt you at the proper time. You will be exalted because you manifested the humility of Christ, casting all your cares on Him because He cares about you. Be sober-minded, be alert. There's a warning here. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. Don't be surprised that churches are splitting up because the devil is, you know, on double time splitting up the churches. Kaya wag tayo magpapauto sa devil. If you feel something na, you know, it bothers you and somehow it it will it will lead you to uh, to be out of this church or to parang awayin yung isang member or isang leader, whatever, check your heart. It might be the devil, you know, prowling around like a roaring lion. Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by our fellow believers throughout the world. So, hindi siya bago. Na-experience din yan. Kung merong kagatan sa loob ng simbahan, see, you need, you need to understand. If you, if you are here to find, you know, you're looking for a perfect church, there's no perfect church. No? In fact, kung perfect church to, since sumali ka, imperfect na. Diba? The, the, the thing is, do not look for a perfect church because when you try to go to another church, it's also an imperfect church. Sabi nga nila, Churches are like hospital. nag accept ng may sakit. Imagine going to a hospital expecting na walang taong may sakit. That's impossible. No? People here are being changed every day by Jesus. So, expect something na sabi nga ni Jaworski, eh, kung ayaw, magsak- ayaw masaktan, huwag ka mag-basketball. Right? The God of all grace who called you to His eternal glory in Christ with Himself, restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. 
to him be dominion forever. Amen. Let's start with fear number one. Tell the person next to you, the fear of failure. No? Takot na magfail. When some feel the leadership shoes of another, they often spend time waiting for one shoe to drop. Suddenly, their experience or lack thereof becomes an issue, at least in their mind. Basically, the only way to gain experience is by what? Experience. Let's be clear. No, Tell the person next to you, your failures do not define you. Kasi lahat naman tayo magsifail, di ba? In fact, lahat tayo nag-fail sa buhay. Maraming beses. Maraming beses. No? I, 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 I'm endorsing na, try to watch yung, ano yung Michael Jordan? The Last Dance sa Netflix. Before niya ma-achieve yung six uh, championship rings, ang daming failures. No? Ang daming failures. And let's be clear, no? Let's be clear. Sabi dito, being examples to the flock. We are being called by God, no? To be examples to the flock. Paano natin gagawin yun if we fear to fail? Sabi, and when the chief, chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The thing is, as I said two to three Sundays ago, fear will paralyze you. And the fear of failure will not just paralyze you, but it will result to doing nothing. And doing nothing is against the will of God. Do you honestly believe that you are here for a reason? Do you honestly believe that God in, intends that God intends to use you mightily, no? For other souls to know Him, for us to lead specifically the Filipino community here in Los Angeles to God. Number two, the fear of criticism. Ito na, baka kung ano na lang sabihin ng iba. Nakakaya naman. Parang hindi naman ako bagay dyan. Nakakaya naman. That's the reason why a lot of churches, no, madaming pwedeng gamitin, hindi nagagamit. It's like buying a smartphone, pero you just use it for text and call. No, I, I remember uh, when we were given company phones, no, dun sa company ko before sa Philippines, we were uh, given a choice to get what kind of phone. And yet, there are people na gusto nila smartphone, there are people gusto nila yung simpleng phone lang. No, but here's the thing, saan mo ba gagamitin? Now, there's this one person na kasama ko sa department na sabi niya, no, I want the the ano yung pricey one pinakamahal total company naman magbabayad eh pero i asked him saan mo ba gagamitin for call and text so sayang sayang yung pagiging smart ng phone kung hindi mo siya gagamitin smartly right so same thing with us sayang sayang yung mga talents sayang yung mga gifts kung hindi gagamitin o hindi mo papayagan ng Diyos na ipagamit because we fear criticism. We don't want to be criticized. Here's the thing. Alam mo ba, whether you do something or you just do nothing at all, you will be criticized. You will still, you will still be criticized. There will always be heat in the leadership kitchen, sabi nga. Di ba mainit sa kitchen? There will always be heat in the leadership kitchen. And leaders with thin, thin, thin skins will probably suffer burns. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, wag kang balat si Buyas. 
No, masasaktan at masasaktan ka. You're not a leader or you're not a worker, you're not a servant because you have expertise in every area. You're there because you have a learning spirit. You must be willing to learn. And the sad news is, there will always be critics. No? Kahit na perfectin mo, ang trabaho mo, kung saan ka man nagtatrabaho ngayon, somebody still will criticize you. Right? Kahit perfectin mo, perfect A ka sa skwelahan, one classmate will criticize you. Right? Kahit perfectin mo yung project mo, one person still will criticize you. And yet, Jesus, no, the perfect being, 100% man, 100% God, still was criticized not just by one person, but by many people until now. In fact, He is the Messiah until now. He's not yet accepted in Israel as the Messiah. 2021 until now. Establish, no? if there will be critics, establish a dialogue with critics and gain best practices from their knowledge. No? Minsan, ayaw natin mag-serve because I don't want to be criticized. Hindi naman ganun kaganda ang boses ko, ba't ako kakanta? Wala naman ako masyadong alam sa, sa mga electrical things, ba't ako tutulong? Uh, wala akong alam sa teaching or sa preaching or mag mag uh, mag uh, mag mag lead ng Bible study baka sabihin kulang yung kaalaman ko I don't want to be criticized here's the thing establish a dialogue with critics alam niyo may sikreto akong sabihin sa inyo kapag yung critics na nagkikriticize sa iyo no kasi all you want is to serve God all you want is to worship God through serving Him. But if there are people who will criticize you, establish a dialogue. Or ibig sabihin, befriend the critic. Magugulat ka one day, that critic no, will be your best friend, best ally, together serving with God. Right? Instead of layuan mo, lapitan mo, exchange ideas, no? sabi nga dito, gain the best practices from their knowledge. Kasi baka nga naman tama. Saka huwag nga tayong balat si Buyas kasi dapat open tayo sa naririnig natin. No? Kasi si, mismo si Jesus, He was criticized. In John 13 verses 12 to 15, it says, When He had washed their feet and put on His outer garments and resumed His place, He said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? Naiintindihan niyo ba yung ginawa ko sa inyo? Sabi ni Kristo, you call me teacher and Lord. Ang tawag niyo sa akin, no? Mga ngaral, ang tawag niyo sa akin, Panginoon. And you are right. For so I am. Tama kayo. Kasi ako ay talagang mga ngaral at ako ay talagang Panginoon ninyo. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. No? I mean, kung ako nga, yung tinatawag niya teacher o mga ngaral o tinatawag niyong Panginoon, ay hinugasan ng mga paanyo. For I have given you, no? For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. It's customary kasi before, no? During those times. Kasi hindi naman hindi naman sila naglalakad sa simentadong daan. I don't know if you were born probably in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, probably 90s. Way back in the Philippines, remember? You will be always uh, asked by your parents, nagugas ka na ba ng paa? Bago ka matulog, bago ka pumasok ng bahay, nagugas ka na ba ng paa? Di ba? Why? Kasi nakachinelas lang tayo. We were uh, uh, playing outside at during our time, hindi pa 
hindi pa sementado ang mga ano, mga laruan, damuhan, putikan or malikabok. 'Di ba? So you will be asked talaga na bago pumasok ng bahay, o oh, magugas ka muna ng paa, o bago ka matulog, magugas ka ng paa. I realized, minsan, sinasabihan ko yung mga anak ko, o oh, magugas kayo ng paa. Di nila ako naiintindihan. Bakit po kami pinagugas ng paa, ay malinis yung paa namin? Kasi dito, malinis yung paa ng mga tao. Lagi nakasapatos, malinis yung bahay, lumabas man, malinis yung lalabasan. So, kumbaga, hindi applicable yung kinalakihan ko dito. So I stop saying, magugas ka na ng paa. Dahil malinis nga naman yung paa. Di ba? Pero during those times to Jesus, pangkaraniwan na madumi ang paa. Right? So, ang ginagawa nila, bago pumasok sa isang bahay, naguhugas ng paa. Imagine, no? Fiesta halimbawa, 1980s, circa 1970s. <clears throat> And you were the mayor of the town, probably congressman, probably you're the richest person sa probinsya nyo, and yet nag-invite ka for piyesta. Bawat darating, mayaman, mahirap, lalaki, babae, uhugasan mo ng paa. Nakakita na ba kayo ng ganun? Parang wala pa, di ba? You will provide water, probably, or hose, or yung poso nung araw, babombahan mo, mag-uhugas ng paa, pero hindi mo huhugasan yung paa, right? Pero look at him. Lord, teacher, for I have given you an example. Ang sinasabi ng Panginoon dito, huwag kang matakot. Kung nararamdaman mo naman na matagal na kitang tinatawag para maglingkod sa akin, huwag kang matakot. I have given you an example. Lord ako eh, creator of heaven and earth, pero hinugasan ko yung mga paa nito. Bakit ka matatakot? Bakit ka matatakot makriticize? How can we criticize a person willing to be humble before us? Right? Right? How can you be criticized kung nakita, nakita ka nila una ka naging humble? Ito nga mahirap eh. Pag nag-away kayong mag-asawa, diba, galit na galit ka, galit na galit ka, galit na galit ka. Pag uwi, nag-sorry agad. Hindi ka natuloy mo pwedeng magalit kasi nag-sorry na eh. In all humility. Oh, yun ang style, James, ha? Pag-uwi mo, mag-sorry ka kagad. Huwag yung pag-uwi mo, una mo, sisipain mo yung ano, psh, yung ano, yung pintuan ng bahay niya, bag! Galit ako! Pagod ako! Inaantok na ako! Matutulog na ako! Hindi yun humility. Inunahan mo lang ng galit para di ka pagalitan. The, the, the thing is, how can we criticize a person who's humble? Right? So if you are afraid, no, if God is calling you to be part of a ministry, if, you, if God is calling you specifically to, to, to be His servant, no, do not be afraid to be criticized. Anong formula, sabi ni Jesus? Be humble. Nobody will criticize you if you're humble. Impossible. Impossible kang i-criticize. Kasi humble ka na eh. Ang masarap i-criticize, alam nyo, yung mayayaman, yung mahangin. Pero ano yung pinakita ni Kristo? Humility. Number three. How about the fear of inadequacy? Ay, hindi, kulang pa ako. Ay, hindi ko pa alam yan. Ah, saka na, kapag nag-retire na ako. No? Saka na, kapag ka... Uh, marami na akong alam sa Bible. Uh, saka na kapag hindi na darating yung panahon na yun, maniwala ka. One good example is Mary. Right? Because Mary, no? Nilagpasan niya yung fear of criticism. Imagine Mary, 16, 17 year old, called by God to be the mother of Jesus. You got pregnant without a husband. Obviously, you will be criticized. Right? Pero, I don't mind that. Sabi ni Mary, be done to me according to your word. According to your promises, I will stand secure, Lord. Sabi, ng, sabi ni Mary, uh, one good thing about Mary, no? nilagpasan niya yung fear of supernatural. 
Imagine being confronted by an angel. That is supernatural. Imagine being pregnant without being no, with a man. That's supernatural. Immaculate conception. Mary surpassed the fear of inadequacy. Bakit? Sino ba si Mary? Una, she's young. Walang maniniwala sa'yo. Uh, may nagtanong sa'yo, Mary, ba't ka buntis? Holy Spirit po. Pinihimas-himas pa niya yung tiyan niya ganun. Holy Spirit po. Hindi ka paniniwalaan. Why? Because you're young. Walang maniniwala sa'yo. In their culture, you're young. Even Filipino culture, sabi nga ng matatanda, o, oh, kayo. Pag nag-uusap pa matatanda, huwag kayo makisali. Right? Pag bata, hindi paniniwalaan. Inadequate. Pero Mary surpassed that. Second, you are a woman. There was a prayer in Israel. Lord, no? Wag niyo kong gawin babae. <laughs> Kasi, in their culture, mas mababa ang tingin sa babae. In fact, naalala nyo, sabi ni Lot, doon sa uh, sa mga ano, sa, dahil may visitor siya eh. And then, people are barging in. Sabi niya, no? Ilabas mo sa amin yung mga bisita nyo, yung mga lalaki niyan. Re-rapein namin. These are all men. Want, wanted to rape kapwa nila lalaki. Anong sabi ni Lot? No, no, no. Respect natin yan, mga bisita ko. Ibibigay ko na lang sa inyo yung two daughters ko na virgins. Imagine nyo yung culture na yun. Right? It's unthinkable. Because second, mababa yung tingin nila sa babae. One, she's young. Second, she's a woman. Third, hindi naman siya mayaman. She's not influential. These are all inadequacy. Pero na-surpass na lahat yan. What else? Fear of change. She, she's young. She's about to get married to Joseph. There will be changes. She was asked to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. No? So these are all changes. At hindi lang yun. Pinakamatinding changes is the pressure being the mother of Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's something about Mary. Like those, no, you lead, you are the product of your home environment. Meron ka na receive na positive at negative na sinimulan sa kultura ng bahay nyo. If you've been taught to doubt your ability, you carry that into your leadership. Right? So be like Mary. Tell the person next to you, be like Mary. You see, you need to admit you weren't hired to be a perfect leader. You need to admit that God is not calling you to be a perfect worker in a church. God is not calling you to be a perfect servant leader. Commit your time and energies into becoming a better leader. Yes, you're not perfect. But you can always improve yourself to become a better leader. No. How many years that I've been teaching sa life group, Bible studies, sermon, Sundays after Sundays, Wednesday after Wednesdays, there will always be a time, no, misan kinukwento ko sa wife ko, right after preaching, since I feel like I didn't did well, no, pag uwi ko sa bahay, gusto ko na simulan yung preaching for the next Sunday, dahil nahihiya ako sa Diyos. Because di, parang di tama yung Parang kulang, may kulang ako. No? Because I want to improve and improve and improve. Not for myself, not for my own glory, but to glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, you're the leader because your knowledge and experience excels. And all this knowledge, all this gifting, lahat siya galing sa Panginoon. In Philippians 2, 3 to 8, Sabi dito, do nothing from rivalry or conceit. We are not here no, to be conceited, to be in rivalry with one another, but in humility, 
count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, God in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Meron pa ba na mas gaganda pang role model kung hindi ang ating Panginoon? And last, as I end, the fear of success. Ha? Huh? Kanina, the fear of failure, inadequacy. Ngayon naman, success. Pati ba naman success, kinakatakutan? Naalala ko, sabi ni Dolphy. Sabi niya, Uh, Mang Dolphy, in-interview siya, Mang Dolphy, ba't hindi po kayo tumakbo na senador? Sigurado mananalo kayo. Alam niyo sagot ni Dolphy? Yun nga, kinakatakot ko eh, na manalo ako. <laughs> Dahil, anong gagawin ko? Ang alam ko magpatawa, hindi gumawa ng batas. Right? Well, sometimes, no, andyan na yung success, pero we fear success. Nakatakot pag napuno itong simbahan na to. Right? Di ba nakatakot? Nakatakot pag hindi tayo ready. Pwede natin katakutan yun. No, nakakatakot pagka nagkakagulo na dyan dahil wala na maparkingan. Ang hirap pa naman ng parking dito sa LA. Right? Pero you know what? That's a good problem to have. Amen? I was part of a meeting, no? big top businessmen and sabi ko pagkakataon ko to to pick their brains and you know learn from these people who are very successful in business there was the CEO there was this department head reporting about the sales and everything about finances about the problems in manpower machines metals and everything in the company sabi nung nung department head sir we have problems regarding this we have problems regarding that Labor problems, we have problems with our machine, it broke down, blah, 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 blah. So, we have so many problems, sir. You need to understand. You know what? I was really waiting for the moment kung ano sasabihin ng CEO, yung mayaman, yung pinakamayaman, yung may-ari. Right? Kasi learning, ano to eh, learning, uh, learning time. Alam niyo, sagot niya, that's why I hired you. Totoo nga naman. You see, be thankful for problems, sabi niya. Because if I don't have problem, I will not tire you. Right? You don't have a purpose here. So every day, you must pray for a problem. So you can keep your job. <laughs> Tama naman, di ba? Here's the thing. Why we fear success? Eh, unang-una, yun ang pinapanalangin natin na mapuno yung mga upuan na yan, hanggang doon sa taas. Di ba? Why? Bakit tayo matatakot? Imagine nyo kung gaano binabaloktot ng enemy yung utak natin. Pati success, gusto niya katakutan natin. No? It's a good problem to have na mahirapan ng parking dyan. Right? In fact, alam nyo ba na meron tayong van? Pwede na natin siyang magamit pang ikot Trap of point, mahakot yung mga tao. Right? You see, sabi sa conclusion ni Peter, no? humble yourselves before under the mighty hand of God so that He may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your cares on Him because He cares about you. He's talking about still humility in handling the fear of success. No? We were reminded by Peter to be sober-minded, be alert, because there is this devil prowling and trying to twist your, 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 your focus. Na, oh, hindi kayo, hindi kayo magiging successful. No, you, you will not be successful for God. You, you cannot glorify Him. Nobody will go into this church and mali pala yung devil. Pumasok yung mga tao, searching, hungry, thirsty for God. Alam niyo sabihin ng devil, oh, yan na ang pinakamalaking problema niyo. Maraming tao. You see? 
Kahit sa ka pumunta, madaming criticism. Even the devil will criticize you. You see, when some leaders receive a reward and respond, no, sabi nga nila, pag, uh, uh, thank you for this award, you see, I don't deserve this. Honestly, they really mean it. We don't deserve anything. We need to give back the glory to Christ. Amen? Sabi nga nila, in leadership, in servanthood, don't hold the gavel of leadership with trembling hands. Now, you need to be firm. There will be times of failure. There will be times of success. But you need to be firm in your leadership. Ito ang pinaka-importante. As we become successful, we must accept on behalf of the team, not yourself. And acknowledge always that whatever we're doing is for the glory of God. Let not, let's, let's be clear. Let not be our intention no, na gusto natin dumami yung tao dito because we want to say to other churches na, hey, look at us, we made it. Ano kayo ngayon? That's the most wrong motive. Maniwala kayo. Alam yun, pag dumami ang tao dito, sabihin nyo sa Panginoon, Panginoon, salamat at ginamit mo ako. Amen? That's the challenge for today. Sabi ni John, John Maxwell, true leadership must be for the benefit of the followers, not to enrich the leader. Amen? This is not about you. Tell the person next to you, this is not about you. Everything here, it's all about Jesus. Everything, it's all about Jesus. How I wish, no, hindi pandemic ngayon. Because I have an oil right here. May oil ako dito eh. There's no such thing as power ito sa oil na to. But anointing of oil is somehow uh, uh, it signifies no, the transference of approval of God. There's no power sa pastor anointing you. There's no power mismo sa oil. You see, the power is in the anointing of God to you. You are being called by God. He wants to anoint you like He did to Aaron, like He did to Saul, King Saul, like He did to King David. Good thing, I don't have to, because of pandemic, I can't. Di ko kayo pwedeng hawakan, right? It's against the protocol. But good thing, God already anointed you. All he is waiting is for your yes. No? In Mark 10, as I end, 42 to 45, And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. Hindi kayo kaparehas nila. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even sa, the Son of Man, ako, no, si Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Now let's, let's as, as we end, no, we're talking about we are being called to lead, we are being called to change. Tonight, we have a board meeting, 8 o'clock, uh, over Zoom. Uh, supposedly, we will be meet in person, but, you know, may, may surging ngayon eh. So, for the safety of our, alam niyo naman, yung board natin, puro 20 to 30 years old lang sila. So, <laughs> we need to protect them, okay? Here's the thing. The church needs you. I, I cannot do this alone, right? Imagine yung si Lebron James nga nagre-recruit eh. Lebron James na yun, di ba? There's no such thing as Michael Jordan or Lebron James. There, there will always be a team effort. No? If you're watching right now in Facebook or YouTube, no? especially those people who are inside in this chapel, I'd like to remind you, if you're looking for a church, no? if, if you're looking for a good church with a good Sunday school for your children, 
This is not your church. Let, let's just be clear, right? If you're looking for a church, uh, looking for a good uh, church for your teenage kids, this is not also your church. I'm sorry. Kasi nga, wala kaming kids at saka children. At saka wala kaming teens, right? If you're looking for a church na, na napakaganda ng worship center, everything is new and everything, we're having a hard time starting up our, our uh, uh, we have, we're always having technical difficulties. But here's the thing. If you are being called by God to serve, you are in the right place. If you are being called, if, if, if you, if you want to be served, if you want to be consumed, I will endorse you to many churches because they, they were established. But here in this place, God is looking for hearts that are true, that are pure, and willing to serve Him. No? Magsisimula tayo sa ilalim. No? Magpapagod tayo. We will roll up our sleeves. Mahihirapan tayo. Magkikiskisan tayo. There will be heat in the kitchen. But I tell you the truth. There will be more satisfaction. There will be more glory. No? Compared na umupo ka at you consume lang sa ibang simbahan. Again, if you want to consume something, this is not the right church for you. But if you want to serve, you are in the right place. Amen? Because we need people. No, I'm, so, I'm so blessed. Yesterday, someone called me, uh, Pastor, we sent a check to your ministry. Another person texted me, Pastor, we sent... Uh, uh, we, I'm, I'm, uh, no, two persons... Two persons texted me. These are all not part of our church, huh? We pledge a monthly offering to your church. You see, ginagawa na ni Lord yung part niya eh. You need money? I'm providing. I'm the Lord of Lords. Do not be afraid. Remember, I was here to serve, not to be served. So, I am the model, sabi ni Jesus. Kaya do not be afraid. You are being called by God. Do not fear. No? Let's do this together. We can do this for the glory of God, not for our glory. Amen? Sabi nga ni, ni John the Baptist, As I decrease, may you increase. Kaya this ministry, it's not about you. Again, if you want to consume, there are other churches that is so beautiful, so nice, because nakastablish na sila. But here, if you want to serve, oh, you are in the right place. Amen? Are you ready to roll up your sleeves? Amen. Let us pray. Let's uh, bow our heads. Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for reminding us that there's nothing to fear. How can we fear, Lord God, if you, if you are with us? Nothing can be against us. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you are the true servant, a true, humble servant who's willing to wash our feet to show, exemplify being humble, Lord God, and challenge us. If I did this, you can do it also. Do not fear. I will provide. I will, provide, I will provide finances. I will provide leaders. I will provide workers. I will provide systems. I will provide procedures. I will provide wisdom. All you have to do is say yes. Say yes to God right now. Say yes to God. And I'd also like to give opportunity for those people who are watching us and uh, Here with us in Facebook and YouTube. Lord, I am a sinner. I believe that you died upon the cross for me, that you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sin. And I believe, Lord God, that on the third day, you rose from the dead and you went to heaven to prepare a place for me. I accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, my friend. Come into my heart. And set me free from my sins. 
And because you are my Savior, I shall not die, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I accept you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Let's give the best clap offering for God for this morning.